Welcome to Good Libations, which is our show about mixology. And I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist. And again, we always enjoy demonstrating and experimenting with different drinks. And today I'm actually going to make a blended drink. Now, to a certain degree, blended drinks is, have actually fallen out of favor with people. They tend to harken back to a different era. And unfortunately, too, blended drinks started to be made in a style that involved a lot of mixes and what I like to call junk ingredients that don't belong in a drink. But recently, I had a fabulous mixed drink in a blender, and I was ever so surprised because I was skeptical especially at first when I heard what the drink was going to be, uh, because it was a frozen mojito. And I thought to myself, you have got to be kidding, a frozen mojito? And I thought, oh, mm, this is going to be dreadful. How can you do that? And what are you going to do with the splash of soda at the very, very last, the splash of the sparkling water? But when I had the drink, it was absolutely fabulous. And I was very surprised. It was actually made by a friend of mine. Now, with the frozen mojito, as a general rule, people will use um, agave syrup to sweeten it or simple syrup. I tend to like to use regular sugar in mine. So that is what I am going to endeavor to do with this particular drink. At any rate, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate it using the blender. And at this particular point, I'm going to put ice in it. And again, I'm a little bit tickled about this drink because my skepticism was definitely won over when I tasted it. So we're going to set about making it now. Now, if you're going to make this drink for a group of people, obviously you are going to use more ice and you're going to make more drinks than what I'm going to make. And another thing about this drink that is so nice, if you're making it for a large party or a large gathering of some sort, you can pour it into pitchers and it will melt down just a little bit. And if you want to keep it slightly solidified, you can stick those pitchers in a freezer or in you know a chest full of ice to keep it that way. But again, you can serve as many of these as you like for as large a group as you would like by making them and pouring them into pitchers. It's so easy to do and so accessible. So we're going to set about making this. And we have some nice fresh mint that we're going to put in the drink. And you want to put plenty in, plenty of the mint leaves, because you want to make sure that it acquires that nice mint flavor that a mojito is supposed to. And of course, we want plenty of fresh lime in the mojito as well. So we're going to go ahead and cut up some limes here. And usually if you quarter them in addition to halving them, you will find that it's easier to squeeze them into a drink with few exceptions. And again, we want plenty of lime to make this drink. Going to leave one shell in there. Seems a little bizarre, but that's what we're going to do in the blender. And again, when we hand squeeze, we get the infusion from the lime of the oil that's in the peel, and that's extremely important. And I have some agave that I'm going to add to this, but I'm going to have to bring the pitcher down to do that because unfortunately it's in a container that is leaking, so 
It's one of those things that happens. And you know, this is realistic too, because trust me, when you're doing mixology, bartending, things are gonna happen. And you're gonna have to kind of compensate for those little things that happen like leaking containers or limes that won't squeeze. And we've talked about this issue before. If you have difficult time getting the juice out of the lime, roll it on a hard surface, put it in, in a microwave for a few seconds and you will find that it will cut easier. The juice will exude easier and you will have a less difficult time trying to get that lime juice out of there. And again, it's far better than using a juicer if you do this sort of thing. Now, if you're gonna use a large quantity of limes, you can, to a certain degree, on your own, you know, juice them with a juicer. But I'm just making, really, a frozen mojito for one or two, so it's not gonna be necessary. And it is important to put a lot of lime in here, a lot of fresh lime, because we want that flavor to really come through. And as I mentioned, because my container of agave syrup is leaking, I'm gonna to have to pull the carafe down here and pour it in. You can also use regular bartender sugar even regular table sugar to sweeten it. And of course, simple syrup that preferably you make on your own because many of the simple syrups that are commercially available are made with high fructose corn syrup as an additive and you don't want that, not in my opinion anyway. But agave is wonderful, especially when it's used in tequila-based drinks or rum-based drinks. And again, with this mojito, I think it's nice to use golden rum it's kind of a compromise because the palates of most Americans, they tend to prefer white rum or light rum, which I personally don't. But this is a good compromise. And you wanna add a goodly amount of it in the drink. And then you're gonna run the blender. And again, I was so surprised at the result that was achieved with a blended mojito. And one thing that I want to mention too, you can add more ice to it and make it a bit more on the slushy side. And also, I think it's prudent to add a little bit of Rose's lime juice to it after you've whirled it through the blender a bit. Because Rose's lime juice has a unique taste to it because it's made from Caribbean limes. And how nice for a mojito being that the drink originated in the Caribbean. And again, in the case of most people in their palates, they probably would prefer this to be a bit more on the frozen side. But for me, I prefer it this way. When it melts down a bit, it just tastes so good. And again, I was absolutely delighted when I taste this drink and very surprised because I was not expecting for it to be particularly good. In fact, I considered it even a bit odd that when I tasted it, I was won over. It is such a refreshing, good version of a mojito. Can't argue with success, that's the thing. And it also shows, too, that you never can know too much about making cocktails. Learn from other people. Never feel that you know everything and that what you do is the very best. It might be good, but you can always learn from other people. No one is indispensable. And when we see what other people do and when the success that is achieved is something very good and palatable and enjoyable, we found something new to add to our repertoire of cocktails. And again, as I always emphasize on all my shows, we want to be responsible in our consumption of alcoholic beverages. We want to be careful. Um, we want to keep our community safe and well spoken of. 
And there's something else that I'd like to add too that I've talked about in previous episodes. When we're tending bar, we want to make sure that we have facilities to wash our hands if a sink is not available, and that we keep our bar tools clean, our glassware clean and sparkling, because these things add to the appearance. And again, thank you for tuning into an episode of Good, Vib Good Libations, which is our show about mixology. Thank you again. I'm Ethel.